Hello everyone! Today we're going to be talking about Alice Isn't Dead by Joseph Fink, based on the podcast of the same name. So let me get through just some of the basic plot points. So Alice Isn't Dead is a story about um, a woman and her wife. Uh, Alice. The, the main character we follow is Keisha. One day um, Alice goes to, uh, I, I think she had taken a trip for her work uh, on a truck and she had never returned. She just never came back. And so Keisha, she's watching kind of these um, TV programs, news broadcasts about murders that exist or, or different stories in the world and they, she thinks she sees Alice in the background of these. She then takes it upon herself to get a job at a trucking company in order to travel the world and search for Alice. Alice Isn't Dead is a good book. I'll go through the things that, that kind of I, I liked and I didn't like. The things that I liked were um, the world that they were in was, was just kind of a modern day world. However, um, there are these people that used to be people and they have been transformed so much by their own inner hatred that they become these other beings where, you know, their skin is all fleshy and falling off and sagging in parts like the guy from Men in Black where he's like, mm -hmm. and shiver in oh, oh, water. That kind of guy. I, I kind of like that. I liked kind of the ongoing war that's existing in this world that people aren't aware of, only only kind of certain people see that go across these small towns. Um, I like that aspect. So it's a bit mysterious, it's kind of a bit dark, um, there's a mystery element to it, but then there's also these other pieces that exist that, that kind of throw a wrench into that. So a few good parts of the book that I liked was, um, you know, Keisha's quest to find Alice. We always like a good mission. Um, so Keisha's kind of determined, she goes out there, and it was really kind of pulling me into the story to say, oh, is, is that, is she going to be there, is she going to be there, what's she going to find? You know, I was really curious and that kind of kept the, the story moving um, in part one. Then we'll get to the rest later. Um, another good thing I liked about the book was the action. It, it, there is a lot of action after Spoiler. it goes to these different kind of action sequences. Um, there's some battles that go on. Um, it gets a bit violent here and there, which is awesome. I, I always love some good gore and, and violence. So I really like that. And another piece that I liked was that Keisha, our main character, she suffers from this uh, anxiety, this, this crippling anxiety that she struggles with. And that was interesting to see because it after you, after I'd read the audiobook, at the, at the end of the book is, is an epilogue about the author and how he talks about that Keisha's anxiety is based on his own and that he wrote this character to show you how someone can live with that. He didn't want to make Keisha conquer the anxiety and just come out at the end a person that's been cured and she's better. Uh, throughout the story she suffers and, and has these conflicts in her head about her anxiety and it doesn't ever really get better, it just shows, uh, portrays someone who can kind of live with that and cope with it and still kind of be out and taking these proactive steps to, to you know, find her missing wife and, and the interactions that she has to have with people who kind of do that obviously is, is troublesome for her, but this character here, it describes it quite well because it's based on the author's, you know, real struggles, and and it was really kind of well done. That was kind of another uh, interesting point to the book. And after you had read it and gotten to the end, and you see that oh, this is why she had acted this way. Um, the author kind of put a lot of himself into that character, which I always appreciate. So that was another good thing. All right, let's get to the cons, the three things kind of I I, I didn't like about the book. After part one, the plot w was. You know, the plot, they always say the plot thickens, but I, I think in this book, as the story went on and on, the plot almost got too thick and it got really muddy and foggy and there were different, um, broader ideas that I kind of got lost in and, and by the last, 
you know, third of the book, I was just kind of listening to it and not really focusing on it because I, I didn't really follow what was going on on some of the parts. There, there wasn't a lot of explanation of the why. So that I, I was kind of, I felt myself kind of rewinding a few times and saying, okay, well, who was that again and why are they here? Um, so that, that was just kind of, for me, w was kind of uh, a negative point. Uh, another bat, another con uh, of the book was the the characters were quite thin. Um, you know, y you hear a lot of Keisha and Alice's backstory and kind of how you know through, throughout the book, Keisha just holds this this grudge for the whole time, and it's understandable, but it's repeated over and over. And Alice, we don't really understand a lot of her motivations. We, it was just kind of explained to us that, you know, here she was and her and Keisha's life was, was fine and then all of a sudden Alice went away and you never really get this to hear a deeper understanding of, of why that happened. It's explained a little bit, but I, I, I felt unsatisfied with that type of just um, explanation. I wanted to kind of get more about how they, how their backstories were, and, and some of the other characters were introduced to. There's things called the the Oracles, a group called Praxis. There's the Thistlemen. There's Bay and Creek, and uh, the whole government conspiracy was all just it. It all just kind of got lost uh, in the shuffle. The complexity of the story kind of tried to do too much for its own good, and I felt like it either needed to have more depth and explanation to the to the thing or it needed to just kind of cut some of those parts out so i know a lot of people are are i know that there's a big fandom for this book as well as the night Vale fandom um, alice isn't dead was a podcast i hadn't listened to any of the episodes before um, going into the book um, and maybe i will go back and do it people said that the book was a bit different and points were a bit different than what was explained in the podcast. So some other news about this book is that it's currently being developed um, by the producers who did Mr. Robots for a television ad adaptation. And so hopefully that will fill in kind of uh, you know, more of these blank pieces and, and explain what I was confused about. So overall, I thought the book was really good, enjoyable. I think part one caught my attention the most and after that it kind of fell off the rails. Um, there wasn't really a chance for us to connect with the characters and they felt it kind of got a little bit too thick and muddy throughout the, um, part two and the conclusion of the book. Action sequences were good. It, keep, it keeps you engaged kind of throughout, but I kept kind of scratching my head and going back and rewinding. Maybe it would have worked better on a physical print format than on, on audio, but I wanted to give it a shot since it was based off of a podcast. I thought, you know, better to do it in audio format. So let me know what you think. Uh, maybe it will reconvene after the TV series is out and see how that goes. As always, thanks for watching, happy reading, and I'll see you next time. See ya. Ugh.